السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن احتدى بهدي واقتدى بسنتي إلى يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال جل وعلا في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يريدون أن يطفئوا نور الله بأفواههم والله متم نوري ولو كره الكافرون صدق الله العظيم Respected, honored scholars, ulama, elders, beloved brothers, dignitaries, and the viewers on the various platforms, the ayat karima that I have recited before you, Allah Rabbul Aizza in the most amazing way says that it is the collective aim of the forces of kufr and disbelief to extinguish the light of Allah on the face of this earth. Wallahu mutimmu nuri. The plan of Allah is, the agenda of Allah is, He would safeguard His deen, He would protect His deen. Even if the kuffar dislike it, even if the polytheists dislike it. Respected friends and elders, we all know what is happening currently in Gaza, what is happening in the land of Palestine. I come from South Africa. We come from the history of apartheid, where they took two, three, five decades, whatever it was, but ultimately in the planning of Allah, the system of apartheid had to be dismantled. The system of apartheid had to be dismantled. And in Hadith Qudsi, Allah wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi, inni harramtu dhulma ala nafsi. That, oh, my servants, I have made oppression, exploitation, forbidden upon myself. How dare you oppress? You know, in the kitabs, there is an amazing incident that is recorded. That there was an elderly woman living on a farm, and she had a cow that was a source of benefit. And she was living with the little children. She used to milk the cow and feed her children. There was a tyrant ruler at that time was passing with his entourage. And he slaughtered this cow. He roasted this cow. Naturally, this woman was perturbed and disturbed. Someone told her that tomorrow this king will be passing by on that bridge. Make known to him your concern. If he hears you out, well and good. If not, that is the condition of a tyrant ruler. The next day, this elderly woman, she stands on this bridge. And as this king is coming with his entourage, she said, I have one question to ask you. Do you want to settle me on this bridge? Or do you want to settle me on the bridge of Sirat? We need to understand, Allah has not made this world a place where justice will be meted out. Nor has Allah kept in the capacity of this world for justice to be meted out. Neither has Allah made the happenings of this world a place which would determine justice. If this world was a place where justice would be meted out, Allah would not have allowed the hands of Abdullah bin Ja'far to be severed in Muta. We see footage, it makes me cry, it makes you cry. I guess it will make any human being cry. But we need to understand that before we become victims of a psychological despondency, which in essence is the object of the media, inna yawm al fasli kana mi qata. The day of Qiyamah will see that justice will prevail. This world is not a place of justice. This world is not a place of retribution. The day of Qiyamah will see that justice will prevail. Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the battle of Karbala, few moments before his assassination, 
he calls his little child Abdullah. He's about to embrace this child, kiss this child. Just then there is a stray arrow that comes and enters the neck of this child, separating the head from the body. You become emotional when we see footage and rightfully so. But like I said, let us remind ourselves the day of Qiyamah will see that justice will prevail. Hajjaj bin Yusuf, that notorious blood shedder, when he died, someone had seen him in a vision and a dream. And they asked him, Ma fa'alallahu bik, how did you fare before the Almighty Allah? What did he say? Qatalani bi kulli qatilin, qataltuhu qatla. In lieu of every killing that I perpetrated and indicated, Allah made me taste the agony of death one time. وَقَتَلَنِي بِسَعِيدِ بْنِ جُبَارٍ سَبْعِينَ قَتْلًا But when you killed my friend Sa'id ibn Jubair, Allah said you wouldn't die once, you will die 70 times. The Fir'auns of the previous Ummah, they killed the boys and they left the girls. The Fir'aun of this Ummah, you know we studied the oppression of Fir'aun. Fir'aun had ordered the massacre of children across the board. That was one crime. And again, in his foolish notion to alter the planning of Allah, Musa alayhi salam becomes the Nabi of Allah. 600,000 magicians accept the message of Musa alayhi salam. For a second time, Fir'aun orders the massacre of children across the board. If you open Ibn Majah on page 291, there is an amazing narration. Who was Fir'aun? Fir'aun was that man who claimed divinity, the man who claimed to be Allah. Bayezid Bustami has written, Fir'aun, not a day in his life did he ever experience a headache. That was the perpetual affluence that Allah had given him. What happened to Fir'aun? Where did he die? Mullah Abul Hassan Ali Nadwi, the great scholar of the age, the sage of the age. What does he write? Mata Maliku Misra. بَعِيدًا عَنْ أَرْشِهِ بَعِيدًا عَنْ سُلْطَانِهِ لَا طَبِيبٌ يُدَّاوِي وَلَا صَدِيقٌ يُوَاسِي وَلَا عَيْنٌ تَبْكِي Dies that tyrant, arrogant ruler Fir'aun. Where does he die? In the center of the ocean, far away from his dominion, far away from his kingdom. There is no doctor to treat him. There is no friend to pacify him. There isn't an eye to shed a tear on his death. Fir'aun orders the massacre of children across the board. They, so I'm making reference to this incident of Ibn Majah, page 291. There was a, a, a man in the time of Fir'aun, by the name of Hisqil. He had accepted Islam, and his wife also accepted Islam. One day she was busy combing the hair of the daughter of Fir'aun. And as the comb falls down, she picks up this comb and she says, Ta'isa Fir'aun, what a dictator Fir'aun is. What a oppressor Fir'aun is. This woman is brought into the court of Fir'aun. Fir'aun says, who is your Lord? She says, my Lord is Allah and is your Lord. In front of me, you deny my divinity. She says, I believe in one Allah. Faqal al-Hurras, Fir'aun calls his guards. And he said, do me a favor. He said, light a fire and burn this woman alive. But before you burn her alive, we see footage in Gaza. It makes me cry. It makes you cry. There's a day like justice and retribution. And that is the day of Qiyamah. This woman, her little children were brought and thrown into this fire. These wo children were burnt alive. This woman was thrown into the fire. When my Nabi went on the journey of Mi'raj, he comes to a certain place. He says, Ya Jibreel, ma hadihi rihu tayyiba. O Jibreel, what is this brilliant fragrance I get coming from this grave? Jibreel said, that is the grave of the slave of Fir'aun who died whilst giving her life for Allah. Next to her are her children and next to her is a husband. 
decades had elapsed when my Nabi's conveyance ascends to the heavens. He gets the brilliant fragrance coming. Let them take the life of one. Let them take the life of two. Let them take the life of 100. But amongst them are those who are the servants of the Almighty Allah. Let us not become despondent. Globally, the world is asking, where is the help of Allah coming? We need to revive the spirit of Palestine. Make dua for the Palestinian Ummah. Make dua for, for the people of Gaza. What does the Arabic poet say? Abi Abliq Taral Aqsa Salami. Oh, my father, you are going to Masjid Al Aqsa. Convey my salams to the Palestinian Ummah. Convey my salams to the soil of Al Aqsa. And say to the people of Al-Aqsa, You may be dead in the eyes of the world, but wallahi, you are alive in the eyes of Allah. I read an article not too long ago. They say 97%, 97% of the youth of Palestine have seen a, a massacre of a near and dear one in front of their eyes. What did my Nabi say? An intelligent one is the one who heeds the happenings around him. When this is the global plight, when this is the crisis of the Ummah, as Muslims, what lessons are we taking? As an Ummah, either we stand up together, either we fall down together. 